Down to Falls Hulk Ops is out in Alpha and in this quick video I'll show you how to optimize it to get the best possible performance from your system. That being said, we're only going to cover the in-game options. If you'd like to get even more performance out of your system, you'll find a Windows 10, 11 and Nvidia optimization guides down below. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. This is currently a closed Alpha. If you don't already have access to the game, you'll find links in the description down below that show you how to get a key for yourself really quickly. When the full release comes, I'll probably make an updated video of this, but the settings will probably be plus minus the same. Without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into it. Obviously, the extraction shooter section of this game is going to run a lot better as the maps are smaller, there's much less going on, many fewer players, but a good place to benchmark the game is obviously going to be the Havoc Warfare, which is the large battlefield type game mode with tons of players, tons of stuff going on, so your frame rate's going to be different based on which of these two game modes you're mainly playing. I'm currently using a 4080 mobile in my laptop. I'm getting a solid, let's see, 74-ish FPS, 80 FPS. This is running at 2K, but that being said, a 4080 is a high number, sure, but it's really nerfed by being a mobile processor. When I play this game on my desktop with a 3080 Ti, I get around 200 FPS, which is massive. The performance there is a lot better. That being said, as long as you meet the minimum requirements, your performance is probably going to be pretty good. If you're on a mobile processor, such as a laptop, it's going to struggle a little bit, especially on the lower end. That being said, the game is currently running in the default extreme settings, which is probably going to be a lot higher than we're actually going to play with. For the most part, whatever it defaults to is probably going to be good enough for your system, but based on what map you're in, things are going to change quite a lot and the one thing I've really noticed is that things in the distance get really blurry or at least it's really noticeable with trees there doesn't seem to be many here. The game looks fantastic but that is to be expected with Unreal Engine 5. Obviously I've got a frame rate counter in the top left if you don't have a third party program like River Tuna. In order to get an FPS counter in the game hit escape head across to settings followed by screen and make sure show performance parameters is turned on. When you do so, in the top right, you'll see a frame rate counter as well as a latency indicator too. This is okay, but obviously third-party software is just going to do a lot better, and that's what I'll have this up for here. Before we get to the actual optimization, let's quickly run through the default presets just so you can see what you can expect from the game. Just remember, this is a 4080 mobile, so it's nerfed quite a bit compared to a normal 4080. Currently, I'm getting a solid 95-ish FPS, which is pretty good. We'll pause the game and settings, graphics, scroll down here, we'll switch from extreme to ultra. Waiting a few seconds, ultra is giving us 90-ish FPS still, not too much has changed. Moving to high, still around 96. Medium, noticeably fog has vanished quite a bit, and we're getting around 100 FPS now, which is an improvement. And finally, the low default preset, still around 100 FPS, which isn't too bad. There's a small improvement here, but obviously the fog being removed and things like that may actually give you a small tactical advantage. Heading back up to ultra, things get a lot hazier. I am down though, and FPS should drop just a little bit. Pausing, heading into settings, followed by graphics. Graphics, there's a couple of things we should address first. At the very top, display. You can play in borderless windowed, but preferably play full screen for the best, most consistent performance. Make sure resolution matches your display or is at least compatible, otherwise it'll be needlessly blurry or cost you extra performance. Your display refresh rate should match your monitor, but of course, if you're running on borderless, it'll match everything by default anyways. Frame rate cap you don't really need to worry about. I had to enable this when I'm playing on my desktop PC if I'm trying to record at the same time as the game will eat everything, including OBS in the background, that stutters a lot, YouTube videos, music even stutters. Capping your FPS to slightly below what you're getting in game is going to give you a more consistent performance outside of the game with programs running in the background. Obviously, for benchmarking, leave this set to unlimited. If you're streaming the game, it's probably a good idea to cap it to 60 FPS, especially if you're dropping FPS in OBS Studio, for example. VSync should definitely be turned off unless you're getting screen tearing with the top and the bottom half of your monitor seem to separate. Scrolling down, field of view, while this does technically affect your performance, set this to whatever you're most comfortable with, as that's going to give you the best tactical advantage compared to just raw FPS numbers. 
And scrolling down from here, we get a ton of graphics options, but at the very bottom, you'll notice that we have super resolution on by default, and it's set to balanced, which is a little bit worrying. I'll explain that in a moment. Yours will likely be set to NVIDIA DLSS if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, otherwise you're probably going to be using AMD Fidelity FX, which is a pretty good option. Anyways, it'll be set to balanced. When you have this set to balanced, I think earlier on, you saw a person run across my screen and there was this weird streaky effect running along behind them. Trees will be streaky, weird issues with leaves and things like that are super noticeable. Whenever there's a lot of motion, things get a little bit confused. And this is definitely not the best to have, especially in a tactical shooter. In a battlefield type section, it's okay, but when there's weird graphic issues and things like the extraction shooter, that's not good at all. What I'd recommend is going into graphics and changing your DLSS or whatever upscaling you have to quality for a improved visual experience. But of course, you'll happen to lose a few FPS when you change this option. With DLSS set to quality, I'm getting around 60-ish FPS up here, but on the ground where it actually matters, yeah, it still seems to be hanging around 60, 65-ish. Not too bad, not too good. If we set it back to balanced, the game will render in a smaller resolution and our FPS should increase. We're now at around 70-ish, so we gain maybe 5 FPS. Obviously, there's lots of things happening, so frames are not going to be too consistent, but we probably gained around 5 FPS by moving down to balanced. So there's not too much of a difference, but visually there will be quite a big difference. That's why I'd recommend keeping it set to quality. But of course, if you can handle it and your system is doing well enough after this optimization, consider setting this to off completely, which should give you, obviously, a lower FPS, but things should just look infinitely better everywhere. The distant objects and things like that should be sharper. At least in the desert maps, I noticed trees in the distance were just ending up being super blurry and weird things are happening to them. But seeming that we only lost 5 to 10 FPS compared to using a DLSS, having any kind of upscaling turned off is a really good thing, especially when it comes to a tactical shooter where vision is everything. For now though, I'll leave DLSS set to quality as that's most likely what most people are going to play with. Small visual artifacts aren't going to be too much of an issue or at least not noticeable. For now though, we'll run through the graphics options here. So, preset. I'd recommend starting at medium, as that seemed to get rid of quite a bit of fog and things like that, making vision a lot better. This is a pretty good place to start from, and it should give you a pretty good boost in performance. Obviously, you'll want to optimize on whatever game mode you're going to be playing most. If you're going to be playing the battlefield open world type shooter, it's going to be a lot more intensive than the tactical extraction, and obviously the difference in performance is going to be more noticeable between these two game modes as well. For that reason, I'll be quitting out of this, and heading into the tactical extraction shooter where we can just stand in the corner and things should be consistent throughout most of the testing. Not too many explosions, not too many people. You should see that this is generally more consistent versus the bigger battlefield type maps. Anyways, with the medium settings, visibility is fantastic. All of the fog and things like that are turned off. So let's get to fine tuning more options. Settings, graphics, scrolling down. The first thing that we can mess around with is probably going to be the textures option over here and texture filtering. Textures just depends on how much VRAM your graphics card has. I have a 12 gig graphics card and currently it's only using 6.9. If we were to come in here and crank this textures option all the way up to extreme, for example, and the same for texture filtering. Our VRAM shouldn't really change all that much, and on smaller maps like this, performance should remain about the same anyways. This will maybe have an impact on the Battlefield game mode where there's a lot more things loaded in, but here at least, having all of these textures loaded in doesn't really have any effect on performance. The game just looks better, if anything. Currently, this option doesn't seem to have too much impact on your system, but raising it is usually a free boost in quantity, and it's not really going to cost you any FPS. If you have a 3 to 4 gig graphics card, obviously you will be playing this game on everything as low as possible. If you have around 6 gigs, set it to probably high and you'll be fine. 8 gigs and above, you can set it all the way up to ultra if not extreme and leave it there for really good texture quality. You can get nice and close to things and they just look really crispy, especially good if you're hiding behind cover and things like that. The game's just going to look a lot better. If you're going to be playing on medium settings, this is probably what I would leave it at and that's that. If you're going for a more competitive edge, obviously we'll be dropping it down to low and working our way up from there. So 
the texture quality at arrays all the way up to ultra, as well as the texture filtering as well, just for a much better looking game when it comes to the quality of objects, models, guns, etc. For extra better visibility, I'd also recommend playing around with the ambient occlusion option. Having it turned on at least is going to give you a little bit better object separation with shadows between players and things like that. It may be a small tactical advantage, having the set to medium should be good. And obviously the scene view distance as well, you'll want to raise to probably high if not higher, so that things load in a lot sooner rather than later, which is especially important for longer distance combat. Scrolling down here, shaders, leaving them on low is good enough, but you can choose to raise this if you want better quality effects and things like that. Having the set to medium is probably going to be a little bit better visually, and the streaming option over here, you'd usually leave down to low if you have a hard drive, otherwise push this up to probably high if you're playing the game on an SSD. That's the one thing that I'd really recommend with this game is play this game with it installed on an SSD if possible, as pop-in is really noticeable when you sprint up to things if you're using using a hard drive. If you're using an SSD, things are usually really smooth and it doesn't really matter all that much. But I did definitely notice that this game has a ton of pop-in when I play with it installed on a hard drive instead. At the very bottom, we've already touched on a DLSS or upscaling. If you can afford to play this with it turned off, I definitely would recommend that as it should give you better visual quality and you're not going to be distracted by weird visual glitches. Finally, at the very bottom, you'll find NVIDIA Reflex. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, I would recommend turning this on if you have one as it should give you better input latency in pretty much all cases if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. And besides that, we don't really need to play around with all that much more. This is a pretty good start for optimized settings. If you're going to be playing with DLSS and upscale turned off, you'll notice that the render scale option over here becomes enabled. I'd recommend leaving this always at 100% as that should give you the sharpest gameplay experience. If you lower this, things are going to get blurry and you'll notice that very quickly. So for example, here's 60, a ton of shimmering, things are super blurry, 100% is where you leave it, and anything above 100% is rendering more pixels than you're actually seeing, and in most cases, it's just going to lower your performance for not that much gain, especially where twitch reactions in a tactical shooter are needed. The weird visual flicker that's going on, I'm not entirely too sure what's causing that, but relaunching the game does seem to get rid of it. I'm pretty sure it's just because I've changed a ton of graphics options that things just haven't loaded back in properly yet, or something along those lines. It is, of course, an alpha, and that being said, lots of this is probably going to change before the game's full release. Finally, other general options that recommend making sure you have turned off or lowered if you choose to use higher graphics presets here are weapon motion blur, unless you like that kind of thing, particles, so that explosions and things like that won't cause such sudden drops in performance, depth of field you'd definitely want to have off, otherwise things are blurred, which is going to give you a tactical advantage if you can see things clearly into the distance at all times, streaming you'd want higher just to make sure that things load in quicker if possible, shadows you usually have a ton of impact on performance and having them set to the lower end here is going to give you a big boost in performance and of course volumetric fog having this set to medium and lower seems to get rid of a ton of fog but if you have this set to a higher option a lot of that does seem to come back here there's not too much but we did see that in the previous battlefield example on the audio tab i just make sure that the audio mode is set to match what you actually have if you just click through the setup it may be set to the wrong thing having these options set to the correct thing can help positional audio quite a bit, although it does seem to be a bit of an issue with the current builds of the game. Audio is something that the game devs do need to work on. That being said, HRTF over here should give you better positional audio, and I'd recommend trying this on, as it should help you better point out where people are just by hearing them, footsteps, etc., where this option is off by default. If you don't like how the game sounds, you can obviously come back here and turn it off. It's especially noticeable when you're using headphones, so if you have headphones, try using HRTF. It might give you a small advantage. And with that, we've practically run through everything. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name is Mitch Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao. And a special thank you to Superior Emerald for being an ultimate supporter.